Yeah, go on. Yeah, sweet. Welcome to another episode of the Two Beards. Uh, we've got another guest for you. Stepped up a weight class this week and gone to a boxer, Kevin Mitchell. Thank you for joining us. How are you, mate? I'm good, yes. Well, when I realised he said he invited me to dance with the crazy ginger cabbie, I remember watching him about fucking a long time back with my nutty mate Gary Page. And he knows Page, and Page is a fucking, he's a wild man. He's a fucking, he ain't white in the head. <laughs> but when he said to me, Kev, you've got to watch this, this, this geezer, he's a cab driver, he's a lunatic, he's off his fucking head, like, so. So I've, I've clicked on to him, so I went through a few of his feeds, and I thought, what, this geezer's not wired up, right? He's not fucking, he's not normal. So I was watching all the, what I liked about him, we was just talking about it, how he delivers things. So if, so if he was like, the fucking Brentwood drug dealer who tries about in his <laughs> own driver with his fucking Rolex watch on, thinking he's a gangster. He destroys them, but it's in a funny way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he does the, the silly mum slagging someone off at school. Like, he just, he just, just how he does it. It's just fucking, <laughs> it, it, it's basically backwards, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another one of your Instagram pals. Did you two know each other before Instagram? Then? Nah, Nothing. nah, nah just you know what mutual it, friends. Yeah, you obviously you know, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but Kevin Mitchell. Yeah, my first memory of him was uh, you know, the babe station. Nah, I was <laughs> I was in New Bar. Yeah, in Loughton. Yeah, I was thinking of that bed at the bar. Nah, not that one. No, <laughs> <laughs> and like you'd be talking to like mutual pals. He'd be standing there. There'd be a group of birds. Yeah, and then Kevin would be like, "Oh, do you like me? Do you like me Which new the shoes? Birds? Which the third? Yeah, do you like me new shoes? He'd look down. He's got his knob out." <laughs> Sometimes, and I was happen. thinking, yeah, he's going to go far this one. Well, tall, pending. It's only small, it's only small. I can't help. My first, the only one I remember is he was fighting, oh, what was the geezer's name? Oh, the Upton Park fight. Oh, well, beat up, what do you mean? The, the, <laughs> what, what was his name? Casidas. The Australian fair, yeah, that's yeah, it. Aussie. Give me a pint of beer last I night was night on, night. I remember watching that, but I was lying on his bed at the time because we, 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 we shared room, we, didn't we? we? Yeah. And um, he weren't there, and I was just smashing the bird whilst he was fighting. So that's my first memory of him, mate. There you go. Some, some people <laughs> listen to yeah, 112 and Jagged yeah, E. Yeah, yeah. I was watching Kevin Mitchell that, fight. That, 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 fight, right? I've heard worse stories. At least you were smashing a fucking bird. Everyone goes, last time I see you there, Kev, you got knocked out. Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, by the time I finished, I turned around and went, oh, what, the fight's done? That was fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> was, was that when you when you fought that, that when you yeah, had that fight, yeah, yeah. obviously at your, the home of football yeah. for you, um, did you accept what was going on? Like it was out, of, it was out of your league, or, or yeah, did no, you? Do you know what it was? I had a lot going on. It wasn't out of my league. I had a lot going on in my family life. For me, being me, I'm, I, you don't obviously know me that well, but I'm, I won't back down from no one. Baz knows we were in the corner, like, and that night there, if I'd have had the right team, the right management, the right promotion team around me, they wouldn't let me go. go wouldn't let me go ahead of it. I went out and got beat. It was, it was a better man on that occasion on that night, but I had a lot of family business, a lot of family issues going on at home. I got, I got beat, and it is what it is, but back then, I was out on the piss two weeks before. Oh, that day of the fight, I was in Lakeside shopping. Mm. <laughs> that's the issue. That's how, that's, how, that's how badly my head was screwed that night. So I was, I was just shot the bit sort of thing and that sort of thing. And also, I'm just a normal kid from Daglands. I ain't fucking no one special. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and I've never... I've never I will never ever, and I've never booked myself as anyone like that. I'm just not as a normal kid that done good for myself. I was the man down the local pub with all my mates in the cross keys in Dagnum. I was in the fucking in the bowling. There were a few. I was always offered to like celebrity gigs and things like that. But it won't you? No, not me. Like I may you, you're, I may you one. I mean, the reason I've come today is because you're real, and, and I, I think you can do good about what you're doing. Cheers, mate. By being real, and I think you could do something very special out of it. Yeah. And, it, and that excites me and bases you off your fucking head. But, <laughs> uh, but what I'm getting at is that you're straight in your will, and, and I like that. Yeah, it, yeah, all that all that fancy bollocks for you weren't it weren't no, for you. Me. No, no, and I've stayed normal. I've got all my mates and my mates still, and I've stayed that way, yeah. Why did you get into boxing in the first place? Was it a family thing, like the old man? or? Basically, I was in a, in a, val- a very violent household. Um, my mum and dad's always cancer state, Dagnum, always fighting, fucking... Made me violent, made me very aggressive. I was always fighting on football pitches, school playgrounds. Just your average kid, do you know what I mean? Just fucking smashing up school playgrounds, really. Beating <laughs> up the bullies. Head biting a tree. Yeah, nut in a tree. Fucking beating up the local fucking weirdo. Yeah, like, 
Yeah, every, every 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 town's got a local <laughs> weirdo, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. They've all got a local weirdo. Oh man, Dagenham had a few of them. <laughs> yeah, basically, I went into boxing at the age of ten. I walked into a gym. Jamie Williams is my brother at the time. He walked into me and Bobby Umman's gym. Bobby Umman is he owns a fish stall in Billingsgate Fish Market. Years later, I worked there. I walked into his gym, which was a pro gym. He then walked t- told me basically, this is a pro gym boy. You need to go into an amateur boxing club if you want to have a career at it. He walked me into a gym in Elm Church and Elm Park, which was a man called Paul Cook, was a trainer. Nicky Cook was the world champion, my mate. Colin Lyons, European, Commonwealth, British champion, and IPA world champion. We all come from that gym, so basically, and then, and then went on from Dagnum and then back into West Ham, where Mickey May and Tony Sims, they, they nurtured me from a kid to a man and kept me out of trouble, basically. Yeah. What was working with Tony Sims like? Because he, get, he gets quite a good good rep, really, doesn't yeah, he? So we, Tony Sims is a Bethnal Green boy, you know, you, the fucking gangster grand, the crime grand, she's from there. <laughs> <laughs> she's more gangster than anyone. But, <laughs> but like, Tony Sims is from that manner, so you can imagine from the area Tony Sims grew up in what he was about. Yep. They run door firms and that. And um, I met Tony at the age of 15 through Frankie Sims. Frankie Sims is like, he met me in McDonald's when I was 15. What are you doing in McDonald's, bro? What the fuck's he got to do with you, you old prick? <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie seems little bizarre. I was a proper powerful man back then, and he um, laughed at me. So I'm the chairman of your club. I said, "Don't talk shit, mate." Like, I had to be like, because I was from Dagenham. I was 15. You get bullied in Dagenham back then, so yeah. I had to be ruthless to this old boy. Long story short, I went into the gym that, that evening. Mickey May was my trainer. Mickey May was the governor, basically. He's not here with us no longer. God bless him, but he's looking with like face to thunder. Frankie seems got his feet up on the desk, sitting there smiling at me, arms crossed, tongue sticking out. And um, yeah, and um, I basically got through Tony, through Frankie. Frankie went, what did you do? Well, how did you get your trainers? How did you get your tracksuits? My mum never had nothing. Um, she was a single mum. My dad was my dad, but he had a lot going on in his life, his mental health and that. And back then, mental health wasn't even spoken about. Yeah. yeah. But my dad had a hell of a lot of shit going on. It was like, get on with it, wasn't it? Yeah, my dad was really, was really badly ill. My dad's a diamond, but back then he was badly ill. And he's still, he's still a diamond now. He's, he's great now, but like, back then he struggled bad. So my mum... My mum had like fucking four jobs. She got with a man called Richard Taylor, who's my stepdad, who was a man who helped bring me up. But I was just a little, little scallywag on the street, made money the way I made money. And I told Frankie how I made money. He said, No, you don't, boy. You don't make money like that. Mm. He went to me, You do this. So we come talk down at Tony, um, Tony Sims' offices in. Oh, fucking hell, I was in um, Essex. Took me to this nightclub and um, met Frankie Sims and Tony Burns, Tony Burns Jr. Sitting there on their own club and that, they went boom, boom, boom. They said, like, Tony Sims went, I'll start training you two or three times a week. Give me your days of training at West Ham. I'll train you days of training at West Ham. You're going to start working for me. So basically, little did I know back then, they gave me a job of working, showing me how to earn money, working in the garden, or gardening in that, in Tony Sims' garden. And um, so I started doing that. They started giving me wages. I started to earn money. And um, it went on from there. I met Frank Warren. And it fucking went downhill from there onwards. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Frank. Yeah. Top, Thanks, man. Frank. Tell me, you fucking, yeah, you'd be a monk with me at the age of 21. Fucking hell, mate. What, what a shock that was. What happened there, then? Well, I was late in your kid, went into meetings with businessmen like Frank Warren. And um, I don't mind Frank. Frank is what he is. He's a fucking common and he... he <laughs> <laughs> and and well, sure, I don't give two fucks about him. He knows that I'm not worried about... I'm 12, 36 years of age. I don't worry about anyone anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. I don't give a fuck about no one. I've had, a, I've had a life where I've lived and met so many good people, so many bad people, and I know where I'm at and I know what I'm capable of and I don't really worry about many people anymore. Yeah. Um. He basically... Signed me into a contract, which is a three year contract, that signed me into a five year contract, little did I know, the three year contract, the small print was a five year contract, and it was just. Was it like as soon as it got to three years, it automatically rolled into five? So or was three year contract, if you win a, if you win a fight for a title on a three year contract, you sign into five. And the money I didn't realise I was signed into was just fucking shit money. Compared to what it should have been? Yeah, yeah. totally, yeah. So basically. Ruined me, nearly ruined my career. Later on in my life, I got hooked up again with Tony and Eddie. Yep. I didn't even know the contract with Eddie. Was just, he's, he's my mate, Eddie. He's a, he's a blinder. And for, as I know, Frank, your cousin Frank Smith. Yep. Just good people. And lucky to them now that I actually own my own property again. 
I've got a mortgage on my flat, but like, otherwise I'd have been fucking, I'd have had my career and I'd have, I'd have owned nothing. Cause so I'd it's been, fact, thanks to Eddie and Frank, Eddie Frank and like doing what they do. Tony Sims, yeah. yeah. Like, that was good to me, like, and people like slag Eddie off. Boxing wouldn't be where it was today if it weren't for Eddie Hearn. No. Trust me. And Frank Smith. Frank Smith works his ass off. Mm. He's a funny fucker as well. <laughs> Frank's going to be so embarrassed when he hears this. Ain't he um, coming on at some point? Frank, yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell Kevy he's going to... Gonna... Frank, back in the day when we was all younger. Yes! <laughs> yes! He was, he was the fucking man, mate. He didn't give a fuck, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he was the bollocks, mate. We, we, oh, I couldn't... Me, Eddie, Frank, my mate Tom Gwill and Pagey was in Blackpool one night. <laughs> it went quite wonky. Be careful of the year you say that this is in. No, we weren't with her. No, no, we weren't with anyone. No, no, and he kicked off in the bar. But Eddie well, said, well, mate, there well, was this big skinhead fella, about six foot five, about as big as Eddie. So this guy's mate's been beat on the show. I'm thinking, oh, fucking hell, I don't want to get doing, doing this fella, right? I'm, I've kicked the stall back, I've got the glass of champagne. Oh, fuck. Uh-huh. But Eddie's, I'm thinking Eddie's going to fold, but Eddie ain't folded. Eddie's stuck it back on the fella. <laughs> The geezer's folding. <laughs> I'm gonna think, fuck, fuck for that. Like, my mate Tom, my mate Tom's, my mate Tom's as normal as you like. So I got a fucking pro boxer here, but picks up a fucking <laughs> bottle of champagne. champagne. I'm a dang, but, I'm a dang, yeah, but yeah, did you exactly. pick it up to save it to take it home? You weren't gonna hit anyone with it, were you? No, I was gonna slam a chair over there. But I'll, oh, there you go. <laughs> the, the funny Wrestling. Thing, the, the, the funny thing is with it though. This geezer was a, it was a noise, it was drugged out of his face, we was just boozing us, like having a good time, just having mad banter. Yeah. Frank, oh mate, it was great company. My mates with Frank was with Eddie, and this guy's mate's been beat and got stopped, and he was half digging Eddie out. But I was thinking, if he goes, this fella, he's going to beat us all up. Like, I'm only just you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've had the fucking door, and Eddie went, Eddie went to me, what the fuck was you doing that champagne? I said, well, what do you think I was going to do that, Eddie? Really? I was saved the fucking day. <laughs> I was going to say you know, that. Prison, you know, <laughs> matchroom would never have been matchroom. Could you imagine? No, but, like, but Eddie's proper. Eddie gets in there spars on a Sunday and that. Yeah. Gets in with the boys' body spars and that. Eddie's, Eddie's game. Eddie's a game fucker, man. Is he, is he, out of all the promoters that you've worked with and for and whatever, is he one that you put at the top? Like, cause does he understand? Is he good man management? Is he... He's fair, I mean, I mixed with Frank at 18, I walked into something, I was from the Kansas State Dagger, my mum, was, my mum's never, we've never had money in our life. We signed into an underground contract over, over one year, which was fucking piss poor, but back then it was good money, but yeah. like, it wasn't really, because it signed me into a load more contracts, we didn't know nothing about contracts. Eddie don't con kids like that. Eddie, like, Joshy Bratzi went to me, I spent, I spent three hours on the phone on two different separate occasions about him signing contracts with Eddie Earn or Frank Warren. So I was explaining to him how it all works and how they talk to you. I said to him, I said, I said, let me tell you something, Josh. I said, when you speak to Eddie, say to Eddie, Kev Mitchell said, why do I have to have a contract with you? I said, I bet you don't, I bet you don't even have a contract with you. I said, he will swear by his word and he will deliver the goods along the way. I said, and he will stand by his word. She's doing it today. I was, I was listening to something today from the uh, Canelo Saunders fight. Um, I didn't know Canelo was like basically a free agent. He's a free agent, yeah. yeah. But trust me, see, Eddie, Eddie is sweet. Look at boxing now. Boxing, yeah. when I was involved in it, was shit. Mm. Boxing that's fucking smashing it. Yeah. I, I'm now got a gym with my mate Kai Fella called, called Bark K9 Boxing in Paddington. Yep. Boxing is booming. Yeah. Who can you think? Fucking of the earn. Yeah, big. gyms all over, all over London earning money. People do take the piss out of like you know, like when they talk Jealousy. about the pay per view. Yeah, of course it is. Fucking, yeah, you should know about that. You should know. You get that yourself, and you're fucking nobody, mate. It's, it's so imagine if you're someone like Eddie. What? No, the no crazy. need for that. He's a legend, mate. What? But I didn't mean. Did you hear that? What? He's a legend, mate. He's a legend. I love, I love the guy, mate. What? Pagey, Pagey's fucking in does. Wanking himself off. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> about fucking worry about it. You can't take anything anyone says from Dagnum seriously. I'll fucking glove he can you. Fuck right. Yeah, I want to glove. I want to have a fight with you, but you won't. He put on. He put on the uh, on the socials the other day I about me and him having a fight. Listen, let me tell you something, right? Every year I'm gonna throw a charity show for my brother. Jason Atherton's on it. Yeah. Beard. I'm trying to get um. I can get Luke Frank. Luke Swim on it. Get Frank. I'll get Frank on it. I'm trying to get Eddie Earn on it. There you go, fight Eddie. Hey, no, I want to fight you. Stop I'll get the two, ju- I'll get the two Big. crazy beard Big nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm on it. I don't care. Let's do it. Let's just do All it. All right. Yeah. How much jo- you weigh? Joey Essex wants to go on it. Joey Essex wants to go on it. No, 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 no. It don't matter how much I weigh. I can't punch. Ard wants to go on it. There you go. 
Well, I'm not, Fire Arch. No, I'm on Fire You. How much do you weigh? That ain't the point. How much do you weigh? Just answer the question. Is that in the, is 16 the, stone four. Yeah, so what's that in kilos? Uh, that is 104 kilos. Right, so I, I, weigh, I weigh 72. 72 yeah, we'll kilos. have it. That's the same weight class. Okay. We'll have it. Yeah, it's fine. Fuck it. We'll have it. Whatever. He's got. I reckon he's got about six minutes in him. I ain't even got that. Do you know what I mean? Battle he, of the beards, yeah. He's got about four minutes in him, and then he's tired, and then I'll go. I've got, I've got, the. when you touch gloves, I've got that. Back to me corner and I'll be fucked. Fucked. Just run round the room. Ring. Ring. Room. I'm going to do that show for you for my brother's kids. My brother's got four kids. My brother died two years ago. I've got three kids. My sister's got, well, we've got kids and there's a lot of us. So basically, my brother's kids every year, I can't afford to fucking, to keep, I'll keep the family. My mum's running around, my dad's running around, my sister, we're all trying our Chipping eyes. in and all yeah, that, yeah. But this is families do, but I'm going to find a charity show every year. Oh, a few Sky Sports presenters helping me out, so yeah, so yeah, it'll be, be alright. But you two will be a good fucking tail. <laughs> yeah, it's bo- it's bo- I'm, I'm in a win win. Bo- I, I can't, I can't bo- lose. Bo- I can't lose. I'm nervous now, I've got I, sweat dripping down I my back. I can't lose. If you eye me out, that's cool. You're 30 kilos heavier than me. Well, it's no drama. Way. If I eye you new at, you are right. fucked because yeah. you won't leave it down. <laughs> well, I'm Granny Ref. Yeah, she can be the ref. She'll be on my side. She will give her a claw, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> if she will be on your side. Yeah, mate, but you're, you're fucked, mate. You're in a lose-lose situation. And if I win, you will not live it down. Right, well, it's not about you and I, but it's about Kev. Um, you know when you f- signed your first professional contract when we yeah, talk yeah. about proper money? Yeah. How did it make you feel? I mean, I know you're saying 100 grand then... It was underground, yeah, was that seven, seven, eight years ago. So, but it's underground. I remember asking my mum for one pound fifty. I was saying to um, Barney Francis before, like, I remember walking to a club and walking to a club with 30 quid in my pocket with my pals. All my pals are street kids, like bad, bad in the corner. Some have done away for themselves, some ain't. And you walk in the bar and you're worried about buying a round. And also, you're trying to look at a pretty girl, trying to catch a pretty girl's life. So, look at you. Six months later, you walk in there. In, in the papers, you're going to be a millionaire at the age of 21. You sign a 100 grand contract. You ain't got the 100 grand, but you get about, you got about 10, 15 grand in the bank. Yeah. You've got a little Porsche convertible outside. You've got a 15 grand car air washing, which ain't worth a wank. And, and, and you've got every girl looking at you. So you get... So what you're saying is girls are shallow. Well, you know girls are fucking shallow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No yeah, comment. Yeah. <laughs> you know okay. girls are... Not all girls, I said, but what I'm saying is the life I led back then, that, I was an 18 year old kid with no experience with with the fucking, with, the, with being in the, the national press, no experience with being on the TV, no experience with fucking with women, I had no experience with money. I was just a young kid that didn't yeah. have a fucking clue. So you know boxing is obviously, it's it, it's in the limelight even more so now, and obviously you're saying thanks to Eddie Owen, but yeah, course, thanks, d- Eddie. do you think... Um, Back then, if you had the right management, would you think Eddie at that time would have been right for you or, or not, or like Barry at the time? I think if... if I love Barry. Baz is a fucking... He's a gem, mate. He's, 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 he's from Dagenham. He's, he's put one on your own. And I think if I'd have been with Eddie from Word Dot with Tony Sims, it's about the team, I'd have been... I, I, probably met, I probably hit 60% of my potential. I was nowhere near as what I could have been. Mm. I was getting wow. fucked out of money. I was on the piss all the time. Back you weren't the, being looked after, really, no, no, was you? No, no, so I was just like... I thought Upton Park for 60 grand and 10 grand's over tickets. Fuck me, mate. 60 grand and 10 grand to sell out Upton Park. That's fucking nothing, kid, it? Six, what? 60 grand and 10 grand's worth of tickets. That's what I got for selling out Upton Park. But let me tell you something also, yeah? Now, who the fuck was selling out football crowd seat arenas back then? There wasn't no, no one. No, no, no. I was no the one. only one in history selling out... I mean... Stadiums, what, yeah, what, yeah. Do you name any world champion back then? Nazim Hamad, none of them was selling out. None of them was selling out football crowd seat wins. And the reason I did that was because I am the way I am. I was in the boozer, I was in the calf. You was one of your own sort of thing, as yeah. they say, like West Ham, wouldn't you? Don't fuck Kev off, he's one of your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Jack Wilshire of boxing. <laughs> Bursh. 60 yeah. grand. And 10 grand over tickets. What I'm saying to you is though, so... Who was in charge of that then? You name him. Okay. You, my my dream and my my dreams always been is well, I'm, I was in dream. Sorry, sorry, Kev. How old was you when you done that fight? Twenty five. So the dream is when you're a kid from cancer, you got to fuck all your dad's got to fuck all your mum. Yeah. Your sisters. I think you want to get to a point where you can look after your whole family and and keep them all safe. 
Like, that's where I that's wanted the goal, to be. Isn't it? That's, yeah. that's, that was my goal. That was my goal. I, you ask any of my boy mates, my girl mates, I like looking after people. My mate Baz in the corner. I look after his daughter, my mate Paige, I look after Paige, I look after him, we put my mate, I look after I try, I try to look after everyone the best I can. And that was my dream, that was my main, my main aim was to look after my family. And when I signed into a concert like that, I'm fucked up to some part of thing, my life's fucked. I ain't going nowhere. 60 grand and 10 grand of tickets, can't even buy me a fucking hand job in the West End. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not Paddington, no, <laughs> definitely not Paddington. I was, I, was, I was just fucking, I was in a very bad place, I split up with the, my two boys, my man, that she, was, she had it hard on me, because obviously, I was always out on the pier, so tracks with girls and that, so she had it As you say, you weren't being looked after yeah, pro yeah. professionally, was you? Yeah, so, so I had a lot of shit going on, basically, yeah, that nobody see outside of the gym, inside the gym. I don't mind Frank. Frank's all right. I speak to Frank like this. Frank's sweet. But business-wise, he never stood by his word. Right. And and personally, I don't mind doing business with Frank now. If I've got fighters now. If I, if I might bad his daughter, she's a good little fighter, fights for Vane and Boxing Club. If I'm doing business with him in, in three or four years' time, I'll sign with him. As long as the fucking contract's fight. As long as he stands by his contract. But back then, he shouldn't have took advantage of a young kid. Yeah. They could have gone. They could have gone, gone somewhere a lot more than what he is. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you get me? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do you hear him in the yeah, background? Yeah, yeah. Baz. <laughs> yeah, Baz, Baz don't need money. What I'm getting at is, though, like, I'll do business with people like that. I don't mind doing business as long as the contract's right. But look, back then, he should have took advantage of a young kid that didn't have a clue about fuck all. And then, like, did you ever pull him on that? Did you ever say like, why? What did he say? He got, he's got nothing to say. But yeah, I was just gonna say you could, you could, you could, not that he would give a fuck, probably. No, he, do you know, but, that, done, but just to him. let him know that you he's knew. Done, he's done to me, Ricky Ann, Kalzaki, Ricky Burns, and I go on. Fucking, hell. Fucking Jesus! Why Christ. don't you do a video on him? Oh, Frank Warren. Yeah, you. I can think do that's that. the one there, isn't it? That's the one, isn't it? I think well, you might have got enough ammo here. Yeah, it's not, it's not even, it's not even that. It's just the truth, and like, yeah. when we talk about Eddie. Eddie, don't be wrong. Eddie is a businessman. He's the same man, but Eddie's fair. Yeah. You can have a deal with it, eh? and you don't throw his dummy out and leave you on the back burner for fucking 10 months and he goes, you know what? Oh, I can get you that fight now for 70 grand. You don't leave you on the back burner. It goes on and you can negotiate with him. That is so, fair. So you know when he got, get, gets to a money situation when you know how much you're not getting or you're not earning, does that psychologically play on your mind as oh. if to say, what the, what's the fucking point? Go around the piss. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like, 60 piss. grand, I'll do 35 yeah, grand yeah, on the do. bar. Yeah, fuck it. Seriously, you shit but, face. But, but, but 35 grand, like, when you're only, like, say if you're getting 80 grand or uh, 50 grand, what's 30 grand? Fucking nothing. Like, money's nothing to me. I, I've been, I've got mates that are like, worth, like, I've got mates worth hundreds of millions. My mate Bill Hyde's worth fucking four, five hundred million, right? Money ain't my being under. My, my being under was to look after my family. I need enough money to look after my but be fair, man. Like, don't take the piss. And I, I feel like in my lifetime, like, and in my career, my career was ruined because of, basically... Frank Warren. Frank Warren, yeah. Ruined my... Ru ru seriously, and as much as saying it, I, I don't have it with me, I don't give a fuck who's with him. I put him straight. He, he, he half, like, conned me out of my career. Like, if he would have guided me in a good in a good light, I could have done so much more than what I did. Like, people love me, oh, you're a legend and that. That's a that's a shame I, now because there's nothing to what I could have been. No, that's... I mean, it's quite upsetting, really, because, yeah. like, you... I know West Ham... Their yeah, fans, yeah. they own, I know, huge West Ham fan, and but my, West. And my son now also, like, he's a, he's a really good fighter. He's walking a little bit down the wrong road, I and mean, I've had a little bit of fall out of him. Mm. But he could now be saying fucking very special with my following. Yeah. But they'll back him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it'll be funny. His first six fights in one year could sell out the fucking copper box. Yeah. Which is big revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old do you think, Kev? He's 16. But he's now got a few people fire, trying to fire into him and that that I'm not happy with. They're trying to turn his head a little yeah, bit or get a sale. Turn, turn, turn his head a little bit, yeah, but I'm trying to guide him, but like, it's hard because when they're 16, they think they know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they think I fucked up, when he thinks I fucked up my career, he thinks he... Why am I listening to you? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, that's the thing with you, with you <laughs> see, see, how the, see how the nation got behind Ricky Atten yeah. and they loved him. Yeah. That should have been you as well, you know? And it's, even now when people talk about Ricky Atten, well, people, Ricky's, the my, Ricky's a good friend of mine, but talent-wise, I was gifted. Ask anyone, mate. Yeah. I was, Everyone I, says it, yeah. I was gifted mm. talent wise. I put him on the. People say he's one of the best we've, we've had, but like, talent wise, I love the piss up, I love the bird, but it's all due to it, it all boils down to that 
I never done like team Rami. Mm. I was with I was with Tony Simmons as a kid. He was going, don't don't do not sign with Frank Warren. I went, oh, I'm glad to see Paul Scott sign. So it was what I say to me. Went to Paul Scott. So it was what I say to me. Romance me into all this belief that I'll be a millionaire at 21. Go out for to sign a contract. Leaving Tony Sims, I drove back from Woodford, crying my eyes out in the metro that he, that he gave me. Ruined my fucking, the worst thing I ever done, but I didn't realise back then what I was doing. And the kids come walk down that road and fuck themselves. They come down that road and they're right. And, and like, what I'm doing now is with boxing. I'm involved in the worst damn kids, but I'm trying to keep the kids away from pieces of shit. Yeah. Dogs. And I don't give a fuck who they are, what dogs are. I'll go out of them any way I want to go out of them. I'm not worried about no one. But I don't want kids making the same mistake and being heartbroken or I've been heartbroken in my career. Because your whole life as a junior, as a kid, as a, as a baby, you run in with a dream. What you don't realise is from the dream becomes a business. The dream, forget the fucking dream, it now becomes a business. And if you ain't got the right people backing and guiding you, you are fucked. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do with kids now, is basically guide kids to make sure... They don't go with the wrong manager, they don't go with the wrong promoter, and they've got the right trainer. And that's exactly what I want for my kids. So it, for you, do you want to be long-term? Would you like to get into the promoting side of it, no, or you just or, want to do training and just or, guide them, be, be a mentor? Be a trainer and a mentor. I don't even want to be a manager. Mm. I want to put my kids into the right managers. I, I'd like my kids like I, I had my kids, Andy Joshua, Darren Barker, Good-eyed people, honest people. I can do work with that. Mm. Work with that. And I know they're straight, so I know my kids are going to be getting looked after. And that's all I want to do is train them. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's it. So you're in, obviously, you're you're an East End boy. What, why Paddington for the basically, gym? Basically, before lockdown, before lockdown, I was trying to get a gym. I've been in the West End, and I had my mate Joshua Barnett. Well, I swear to God. And Joshua Barnett went, give me... You give me a business plan, and I'll back. I'll back it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what I was that fucking fun and I'm stupid back then. Only four years ago, I didn't know what business plan was. I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm thick. Honest. Long story short, years later, I realised what business plan was. I worked out a business plan. I was gonna do one in Bethnal Green. Jason Atherton, he had me a meeting with his management team. Sat with the management team and they've like basically had a chat with me about how to gather the money up what I need, which is about a quarter of a million pound. Boom! Lockdown's come on. Fucked it. My mate Kai Fella, I've been training for three years. My first mate him, he was like, businessman, not good at boxing. Two years into it, now he's a fucking animal, he's a savage, just gives off his head. Little do I know he's a high end business guy. You don't I don't you don't have to into know what you do with one every day, like you, you train them and get on with them. He's gone to me, Kev, I'm going to buy a gym for my company, Bark. Would you do the boxing now? I said, I'd love to, Carl. It's like in, like, it was in lockdown. I would never put the piss in. Yeah. My mortgage was coming out every month. I had nothing. I didn't... When I was tired, I'd put a bit of money into my flat. I'd never have no money sitting over and I think, I'm not being big at I'm not saying I had money or I had loads. I didn't have money. I didn't have nothing. And he went to me, basically... Bit, so I started off PT in the parties, bought the gym, and then my mother was gone and done a bit of PT in there. And fingers crossed, we've got, we've got a kitchen in there. And with the kitchen, I put Jason Affett in the kitchen to do a food prep delivery to all the city, everyone in the city. And luckily, I was basically, yeah, if it, if it goes right and he hits it off, it does, it goes right. But if not, I would be a stripper, will not I? <laughs> my hope. My, my but you, do you enjoy what you're doing? I love it. All yeah. ages? I do I do businessmen, I do I do amateur boxing clubs, or so I do West Ham Monday, Wednesday, Friday. As, 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 as you do that as voluntary work, that's like my old coaches did it for me. That's training kids to get them through. I do a knife crime unit, I look after them. Get kids out of the gangs and that. Just just, just, just for my sort of background kids. Is this all in Paddington? It's not in Paddington, but that will be in Paddington eventually. And the West Ham kids are in Plasto. Yeah. West Ham's club. I'm in Paddington five days a week. Coaching and like doing high-end business people that are very highly stressed, with a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Sometimes yep. kids are at university... They're doing degrees that are fucking highly pressured by the families. Just dealing with very highly stressful people on a very day-to-day -day basis and trying to basically make their lives a little bit more happier. Why are you looking at me for? Well, I want, I want to know who's going to be going down his gym to get prepared for our fight. You can't get him to train you. 
That's unfair because then who am I going to get to train me? Go on, go on, she's up for it. She ain't going to train. You can't get him to train you up. You get. I'll have him over there. Yeah. I'll have Bad. And you have him. Get his daughter. His daughter yeah. will train you. Yeah, fuck fucking it. sit down over there. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to no, no, no! You can't, you can't have him train you. That's unfair. So what I want to do with my fighters as they get older, so my amateur fighters are coming through. I want to, so I used to sell tickets in pubs. I'd always been in pubs my whole life. I was like the last of the old school selling pubs and tickets in all the pubs over East London, all over fucking all over the world. Yeah. What I do with my kids, like his daughter, like my son, like you got like little Woodsy, you got like little Tom Wellen, you got there's loads of them from the West Ham club, like West Ham club. There might be more from different clubs, and I don't mind where they come from, but I'll get them into PTN. They're better networking in gyms, PTN, good business people with smart brains on their heads, yeah, yeah, yeah. and been in fucking silly pubs with gearheads. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. They're off me, my, my mate. From there, <laughs> you don't need kids, you don't need fighters around that. Yeah, yeah. And I was the last of that old school sort of like old school vibe. Yeah. But what I'll do now with my kids, I'll put them in gyms, they like want jobs. Get him in Jim's PT in, and they'll do well for himself. It's a good way of looking, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but now with boxing and anything, there's these kids know how much money there is to be made because he didn't have social media back in these times. No. Yeah, yeah. If he had, had if he would have had Instagram back in these times, like yeah. the money that he would have been earning would have been yeah, course, yeah. would have pissed all over fucking sixty grand to sell out a stadium. Do you yeah, know what I mean? So that's grand. the difference. The Looking kids nowadays. Like, I know that. Sell out West Ham football ground. Would, would, I should have probably got one and a half million. Easily. Like, what I'm saying to you, like, I was a kid back then, signing to the first three year contract, it just fucking ruined my career. But what I'm saying is, like, my kids won't be making them fucking money. Any kid that's backed by me, like, I had a kid with me called Louis Lim. Mm-hmm. I sat in a meeting with Eddie Earn, um, Eddie Earn, uh, Frank Warren, Francis Warren, and, the, and, his, and his partner, talking about contracts. So I looked for the contracts. So I know contracts now, I understand contracts. Yep. I know money, what it's worth. British title fight, was that 12 and a half pound? I went, I said, no, not 12 and a half grand, mate, but it's tough. I said, I've got fucking sold shit money. I've got 27,800 quid back fucking, back 15, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, yeah. I said, so why am I going to let my kid now fight for fucking 12 and a half grand for British title? Them sort of fights can end your career, like, career injury, career, career ending, like, injury ending, like, if we ruin your career, them sort of fights. Mm. 12 and a half grand, like, once he gets 12 and a half grand, he pays his 10% of his trainer, 25% to his manager, pays tax on it, probably walks out about fucking four grand. He's got both his hands broke, his jaw broke. So what I'm saying is, I don't mind dealing Crafty, with these people. Crafty, innit? I don't, I don't mind dealing with these people. I don't mind dealing with them, but I won't let my kids get fucked over. Nah. So what I'm saying is, I, I end up losing him to um to Warren, and basically, and I had, his, I, had his, I had his managerial contract. I still speak to Louis now on a regular basis. I ring him up the night before his fights, so I give him a little bit of advice. And he's looked after now as a coach by one of my mates, um, one of the Bowsers. But So I know he looks like one of the Bowsers look after him, but... On like promotion side of him, money side of things. His mum, his mum rings me about three weeks ago saying, "So sorry, Kevin, I didn't realise what you was trying to get out for me." So I said, "No, Lisa, I was like, I'm, I, I've been that kid that got fucked, so I don't want it for any of my kids." Yeah, it infuriates them, you, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes me angry. Mm. Like, I want my kids. Like, I want them to be British champion, perhaps five defences in the British title fight. Their ass is paid. Yeah, That's yeah, my yeah. job done. Anything from them is a bonus. Mm. And, and that's how I look at it. Like, if I can get a kid's mortgage paid, fucking go, go and get an electrician or go get a plumber, go, your ass is done. Go and do something, yeah, you got yeah, nothing yeah. to worry about, yeah. But if you're special, go on millions. But what I'm saying, you know, as, him, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a guy, a, a coach, and a, someone that's guiding young kids, trying to keep them financially safe. So, like, yeah, so that's exactly what I'm trying to do now. Well, so, fucking that. fingers crossed to you, mate, that it all it comes to fruition. You keep Sorry, doing Al. it. How much did you say they pay the managers? 25%. Oh, okay. You ain't my manager. You're my mate doing me a favour. Bollocks, mate. Bollocks. See your Actually, email. You're a manager see now. The, yeah. see, the, see, 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 see the email tomorrow. I ain't answering them. You can answer them your fucking <laughs> self. Have you answered the fucking 27 that have come over the weekend? Yes, I did, mate. So now I want 30%. Kevin, negotiate my contract with him, please. He's ginger. You know I love you. He's ginger as well. Right? What, um, and so... fucking as well. <laughs> So, obviously, a few days since uh, the Canelo Saunders fight. Did you watch yeah. it? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, I spoke to Billy yesterday, today. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. I think this morning, yeah. How was he feeling? He got, Sore. He got, he got a cracked. He got. I saw. He got fucking. He told me, yeah, he got a fucking up. He, he's, he's not. Yeah, he's not good. 
I think I read something earlier. Frank said, okay. I, I'm okay. Broken eye socket. But the main one was broken cheekbone in three places. Fuck me bad. Because he leaned into it. you see it? So he's got yeah, his eye socket. He's got, he's got a fucking cheekbone in three places. Uh, he, was, he was proper in that fight before that as well, yeah, wasn't he? Doing well, yeah. yeah. He had his yeah, hands low. Yeah. That's when you know he's confident and he's up for it. And I thought yeah. he was ratting it. And he I, just I, got caught. What do you? Billy what's your view on it? I've known Billy since I've been, kid, been a kid. He's got a brother called Tommy. Little Tommy song. Tommy's is a mad cunt. He's one of my mates. Mm. Absolute lunatic, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? The public or something. He's a blind eye. And um, Billy's as game as anyone. So when I knew Billy was going out to fight him, I knew Billy was out to... Billy wasn't going to fuck about Billy was going out to fucking fight him. And I know also Mark Tibbs had him out on the training camp long before it. There was a way... They sacrificed a lot of time away from the families... But it is what it is. Like when you like, you're not mixing with like world class fighters. You're mixing with like the the, the elite, best elite athletes, aren't they? Yeah, like, like Canelo. Yeah, like, he's, like, he's a freak. Like yeah, and he's good steak. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a joke though, isn't he? Mm. He is an absolute yeah. joke. Yeah, he, he's a beast. He's yeah. good steak. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. If I had that steak, I'd have been banned for ten years. Do you know what I mean? But, like that can't because he just signed a fucking three hundred sixty million pound contract with his own. It's good steak. That's just the truth. See me, I'm, I don't give a fuck either. That's why I don't get no commentary work. But that's <laughs> Could you imagine him on commentary? <laughs> He'll be chilling <laughs> Carl Frosch every fucking two Shut minutes, up. wouldn't he? Shut up, <laughs> Carl, you useless cunt. Shut no, up. Just speak truth about life and that. Speak truth. Don't con your public. Don't con your people. I love my people. They're my mm. people. And the reason I'm here, though, is because you're like my people the way you are. I didn't know you was here, but like, you're the way I am and that. And the truth in it is, yeah, like, personally, I think... I don't think that Canelo's straight. He turned pro at 15. He's, 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 he's a, he's a, no, don't be wrong, he's a great fighter. He, he's a freak. Do I think he's... Do I think he's... On something? Yeah, I'd say he was. Mm. If you say I've got bet, bet me fucking my dick, chop it off, I've, I've bet my bollocks that he's on something. That's just been honest, though, isn't it? That's just been straight. Yeah. And see Billy Joe. Billy Joe's probably the last... Him and, him and Tyson Fury, probably the last of my breed, like... And we was a dying breed. Like, Bad says about dying breeds have been in East End and that. Old school and that, but being in pubs, having a beer, being with your mates. Billy Joe and Tyson Fury, they're the last, they're the last of them. Yeah. They're the last two, to be fair. Do you think uh, Billy will fight again? I hope not. Yeah. He's got enough money. He, he, I know he buys property, he buys land, builds property. He's a smart guy. Yeah. He's been very he's successful. Good people around him. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he, he dad told me his old man's a blinder. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's, his brother Tom is a lovely geezer, yeah. Mm. He's got, yeah he, he, do, he do right, Billy. Mm. He don't need to fight anymore. He didn't need to fight that fight. No. Nah. Yeah. And he's good stuff, Billy. Who's your favourite fighter to watch? The best fighter to watch. From the old school, I'd say Sugar Ray Leonard. Of this time, Terence Crawford. Mm. Terence Crawford. Yeah. So, Eddie was getting ants in his pants uh, on the press conference when the bird type piped up and said oh pound for pound Terence Crawford or Canelo like and he was she was trying to bait I, Canelo into it I believe Terence Crawford is straight and yeah he can tell he's straight like he's, he's a nice kid I just, and the reason I say not I say Terence Crawford and not Canelo because I don't think Canelo's straight with it and that's just the honest truth like um and someone that I was most excited from from the GB team was Joshua Barazzi mm. I expect big things from him yeah he's a fucking freak yeah. Are you another one of Eddie's Eddie's lot match rooms? Lot? Are you a Joshua fan? Do you? AJ. Yeah. Do you? Do you understand about AJ? I've never spoke about. It. I'm not. I'm not in the press. And Billy Joe, AJ paid for my brother's funeral. Billy Joe paid for my brother's coffin. Wow. Wow. That makes you want to cry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He won met one in the chapel of wrestling. I went, Kev, where are you? I said, I'm in the chapel of wrestling, mate. He went to me. You're an hard bastard. Don't forget the conversation. I went. I've got to be Josh. He went to me. Tell your mum it's done. But I thought he should shed the just giving page because I don't mean never had the money, my family never had the money. Yeah. And he and he went he went the well, just giving page, he shared it. He went, No, I tell your mum I'm packed because my mum used to help him sell ringside tickets yeah, yeah. when he first turned over. So my mum's my old ticket contracts, my my, old, my ticket sales was mass I was the biggest. And my mum helped him start sending ringside tickets when you got people you dealing with like thousands. So you trust them people. So the people my mum giving was what people said, Tell your mum it's done, it's done, it's done. So he paid how much is it? I said five and a half. I said, yeah, it's done. Then Billy rang up Paige, mm -hmm. Billy Joe, and said, to tell, how much is the coffin? He went about three, three and a half grand. He said, tell Kev, I'll send it to his mum's account. 
Billy Joe played that as well. Fucking tip you out to them, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. but yeah. nobody Top. hears that shit. No, it's no. nice to, yeah, nice to know that. Like, That's unbelievable. And I, and I yeah. didn't sing him for a year. Yeah. I trained him quite a bit when we was younger, but I, when he was younger, but I didn't sing him for a year. Yeah. I didn't seen Billy for fucking three years. Yeah. You know, like, but they're proper people. When people slag them off and that, and they, they're... But they don't know and people don't, nah, people don't nah, know them, nah, do they? They just, they just go on sound bites and, and stuff. And they don't really know boxers, generally. Like, people's like, my mate's coming out, oh, James Gale, he, 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 James Gale's flash. James Gale's flash, he's a diamond, mate. Hmm. His, his, his sisters and my mates, their mum and dad's my mates. But to get to know someone takes time and that. And to get really like, you obviously didn't know what I was like. You obviously didn't know what I was yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah. You see me on TV and that, but to get to know really what I'm like, you have to spend time with me. But yeah. it's like with the fighters also as well. Yeah, people don't need to realise these these pro these fighters, football stars, and what they got lives. They're yeah. people, aren't they? And the, and the best fighter that we've ever had, let me just put and state it, was Joe Kawasaki. He follows me, but it <laughs> don't matter. He's a fucking legend. I'm no, trying to get him on. No, seriously, he don't give a fuck. Yeah. He's prop, mate. I, but we was in a bar in Barcelona. So me, we were down by Stagden. Me, Dale Bart, I spent some of our Kawasaki, a lot of our mates, all of our mates, while springs of us. Get his little boy, oh, he's a legend. I said, oh, fuck me. Man, 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 he kept on buying Joe a beer. Man, man. I said, I bet he buys you a beer. He went to me. No, I'll buy him. I said, Joe, he wants to buy you a beer. I said, I'll buy you a beer. Like, and Joe, Joe bought him a beer. I went, so they're, 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 these groups, skazers, they're bearing with us now. And I went, Kev, he's a fucking superstar. I went, I looked at him, I went, Joe, we think you're probably the best we've ever had. And he went to me, shut, he's like, shut up, you prick. I went, hey, you probably are like. I won the Senior Ray Blaze once. I thought I was King Kong. You won it three times, you cunt. <laughs> and three different weights. Then you went on to do like, but he doesn't, he's, he's such a lovely man, like. Right? Yeah. Old Barker's lovely, Spencer, like. Spencer Roller was one of my heroes growing up, but like, now he's my mate. I look, but they're like, it's mad, it's mental, like, as in the boxing world, that is, and that. And how we have come in the world, and that. People always look up to us as my idols, and they're, 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 they're my pals, yeah, yeah. Do you know what's good to give you credit is, is through the stuff that you've gone through through your career and whatever, it's enough to make a lesser man. I don't know, fucking fuck it all off completely. Do you know what I mean? At least you're doing something with your life and you're not just it's, dwelling on stuff. So I'm not going to... I'll, I'll put Frank in a bad light. I'm not going to put Frank in a bad light and too much of a such. He's given me guidance in where I'm now. He's taught me where I'm now. And he's given me reason for where I'm now and what I'm doing now. So, like, my goal as a young kid was to be a multi millionaire of a big mansion, drive back to Lamborghini, look after my family. My new goal is now is to look after young kids, make sure all the ads is paid, that their kids are safe. And their kids are safe. Mm. So it's giving me new guidance. So like, as in, it's easy to bad mouth people now. I didn't know Frank's business back then. Now he was getting on with his business. So it's taught me to be where I am today. Yeah. And it's given me a guidance. It's given me a different, it's given me a different outlook on the boxing. And it's given me different goals. Yeah, you've taken that negativity and turned it into a positive and and, and yeah. yeah, good. What um, West Ham, uh, happy with their season? I think we're better than fucking fans, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we're better people like myself. Yeah. yeah um, what, what do you think of the owners? They're they're like Sullivan Gold. I know them. I've met them personally. They're right. They're they're the fucking yeah. They're, they. They sold fucking the bowling for fucking my, my last my, my retirement party was the last ever party in the grand ever. She's like a West Ham god, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you when did you know your boxing career was over? When did you know that was it? Well, I got knocked out of a fucking jab. Once <laughs> 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 you're yeah, done with it, that's it. You know what? My mum said that to me. She said, Boy, why are you retiring? I don't forget. I was trying to dance Sky Sports Studios. I said, I went, Mum. After, so after the Lavis fight, I thought, um, Barroso, to try and fight Anthony Qualler. Anthony Qualler wouldn't fight me straight after. He didn't want to take the fight. Why? Maybe he obviously didn't fancy it. That ain't a big deal now. He was a good fight himself, but I just fancied, I knew what I'd fancy I'd beat him. You know him. Long story short, they put me in his boss on. They can't knock me out of a jab. So about fucking, I was in the gym getting ready for the European title fight. My mum goes to me, I went, Mum, I can't box them. It was in the week, it was on a Friday. I was doing 20 minute rounds, not two, three minute rounds, 20 minute rounds. And that's the same with the with, with animals in that gym. That's why Connor Ben's so good. That's why they are what they are in that gym. And I wanted to quit in a session. I've never wanted to quit in my life. And that weekend, I let, I let Drew over me. I come in the gym Monday. I, let, I went to Tony Sims. Like, he was like, he was like, he was like a father figure to me. I didn't want to let him down. I went to him, 
I need to call it daytime. I need to gear up. Right, he went to me. Good. I was over the moon. I released wow. the stress zone until it was gone. I was getting ready for a European title fight. And Eddie went, Eddie went, Kev, go, go get your fucking money. I went, Ed, now, mate. I won't fuck the money. I'm worried about the money. I'd rather fucking, I'm not going like, to call me your fucking mates. Mm. I'd go and, like, me mates were all proper. Like, some have got money, some ain't, but I ain't going to call me people. Retired. And um, my mum went to me, why did you retire, boy? I said, mum, I got knocked out of a fucking jab. <laughs> she went, did you agree? She went, that's white, boy. No, 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 that's fucking white, little dice. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dot. Fucking yeah. yeah, that was the truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then that was the end of it. I got offered a few comeback fights after it. But people, people, like, oh, I do this, doesn't know oh, Fucking, when you stand it, you stand. I see like other fighters making comebacks, like, like Tommy Crow ring me up, like he wanted to make a comeback. I said Tom, don't do it, mate. Dave Matthews, I got a few of Johnny, a few of my old mates in there. I said that. Like, Dale Bark was thinking about it, going play on social media. You retire for a reason. And mm-hmm. They say, once a small child becomes a man, but that one, that strong man, slowly deteriorates, and you're not the man that you once was. And you've got to realise that. And, um, yeah, and as I said, that was in the time of me doing what I did in my life and my career. My goals, my dreams changed. My dreams and goals now is, I've got an hand for six fighters. They're all good fighters. They're giving me their art. I'm guiding them into a better position financially. And that's what I want to do with kids. Fucking yeah, top top man. If um, if you could fight anyone in your prime and their prime, who would you fight? Who would you like to go with? Money fight? Yeah. I'll fight AJ and Tyson at the same time for fucking two million. I've got to a fucking contract and I wake up laughing. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone him and you Billy wish... Joe be next to each other it don't matter anymore Les does it bosh is there anyone you wish you thought back in the day that was could have happened that just yeah, didn't like, happen for any reason like, um, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought John Murray was one of my good mates I knocked him out Ricky Burns is one of my good mates one of my close really close mates he knocked me out yeah and I'd also have thought Anthony Quella Debbie Matthews um, there's a little Gavin Rees which was a great fighter to be honest with you, Gavin Rees I didn't like his style, but styles make fights. I wish I, I would have, I wish I'd have gone in with mixes. There's loads of them. Brandon Wills was meant to fight me for the world title after not John Murray out. He didn't want it. He offered me fucking offered me forty thousand dollars for a title fight. It's a Mustang, isn't it? Fucking hell! He's, he's... You can go in the pennant and get a wank for thirty thousand. Two. You get twice. No, but you know what I'm getting? We're getting that. So I've been amongst it on it, and like there's been a few fighters I wish I'd have tried boxing that. But I think. At my full potential, I think I'd have been just under par with the elite, like the elites. But I, I don't get me wrong, I, I mixed with Lenaris, I was beating him. He's, he was one of the best pound for pound at one point, but yeah. I was beating that kind of, I mean, like, what I'm getting at is, is that if I would have been looked after right through my career, and I would have stayed with Tony Simmons as a kid and cried a few properly, who knows where I could have gone. But what I've done doing now, what I did then, is I put my, all my ambitions and my, all my energy into looking after kids. Yeah, good. Yeah. Fair play. What you should do, mate. Might go rather a than sitting, beer. That's rather than sitting in your cab slagging might, people off. Might go a fucking beer. Yeah, go on, let it grow. I reckon you could grow a beer. I reckon, I reckon you could grow one. one. Yeah. I can't no, see no, much yeah. patches in there. I reckon you could no, grow one. I reckon one. you could grow one, yeah. Then yeah. not about Baz, he looks fucked over. Kev grows a good beard as it happens. Nice beard. Grows bald, it comes on better. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet it looks the bollocks when you've got a thick beard in your bald. Yeah. I mean, like an a- age riddled Stone Cold Steve Austin a with a goatee. He looks a bit sexual. <laughs> 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 so I feel like we need to I feel like we need to go on the piss with it. Yeah. yeah. Can, we, can we talk about the fucking Brentwood, the Brentwood, the bad boys in Brentwood? No. Cuz I on here about it. So I, you you got to do another well, if you don't do it on here, we have got to do another one on the Instagram just All right. for my I'll tell you what slide into the DMs Kevin and, and give me a bit of ammo and then I'll put something together. Funny can't do it. Don't, what are you getting the arm for? I'm not getting it. Why am I getting it? You look at me as if to say you're just a prick. I'm not getting it. Yeah, but why? I'm not getting, I couldn't give a fuck what you do. I'll, I'll, get, I'll buy you something. I don't need to be bought anything. I'll give you something. What? Give me a fight. Give me the fight. Sign the contract. Where's a bit of paper? Also, also, Has anyone got a pen? Wait, wait, wait. You need to slag the people off the trains. Has anyone got a pen? You look at your dodgy when you ain't wearing a mask on. All right. You've got to get the fucking pen, Rune, yeah? 
Give me a pen. I've got Rooney piping in. What is this? Contract signing for the fuck. Oh, this is gangster. This is gangster one, man. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah. No one's got. A, no one's got a pen. Who's been plying these two with beer all night? Fuck's sake! Mad, man. I want to sign a contract for the fuck. Whilst Mitchell's here, I want to have it. I want well, to sign a contract. Well, let's do a video and we'll just shake hands on it. Right, come yes, then. Come on. So me and you are going to do a, have a boxing fight. We're going to have a ten bag. We, ain't, we can have a UFC fight if you want. No gloves. I'm on the. Mark, we're Mark, having a fight. I've got ten bags on the brand beard. <laughs> That's you. There you go. So we're shaking on what? We're having but a ten bag. My, my brother's charity show. York Hall Bethel Green. I'm hiring it out. York Hall. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I'm hiring it out. I've got Sky Sports present. I'm doing the commentary. I'm trying to get Curtis Gallagher doing doing the ring announcement. Why's you your hands sweating? There you go. What song are you going to walk out to? Um, the Power of Love by Celine Dion. <laughs> That's your one Direction, really, huh? I'll get JLS. I'll get fucking Marvin. No, you can't. No, I was going to have Marvin. Marvin, yeah. Come by Army Lord. Fuck sake. I was going to have Marvin. No, right. That's it then. You've seen that. Everyone's witnessed that, yeah? Uh, so we've shaken to have a, a charity punch. Uh, head guards or not? For, for huh? my brother's kids. So, oh, this can't be, oh, this, this can't oh, even be let down. This is my brother's kids. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not wearing head guards. What's the point? So you don't want to wear head guards. Oh, I got to. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, we'll have to have you got one big guards. enough for my head? Yeah, we'll get one for you. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have head guards. Yeah, we'll have it. Oh, yeah, no. fucking hell's bells. Why are you bottling it? I'm not bottling it. Look, your like... arsehole's gone already, you pussy. <laughs> all that giving it large on Instagram. Look, his arsehole's gone because he's got to fight someone thirty kilos lighter than him. You fucking wet wipe. Right. For <laughs> 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 fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Like yeah. Conor McGregor That's and Floyd, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Are we Beard walking off. in the ring yeah. like that? You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> Mate, what, what, you know what? I'm going to Vegas, so I was in fight. Nate Diaz, so. I went out on social media, I thought, I'm bumming, I thought his mates, I didn't think it was his mates. I met, I met with his mates. Me and my, all me and my mum and Paige was there. Me and Paige had a fucking straightener at the fucking way. We had to show up. Blood everywhere. Goes on his truth. We invite us back to all the fucking after parties. He's a blinder, mate. He's off his head. I bet he's, he is. He's, 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 but, but I didn't even get to fucking meet him. My mates met him. I was, I was, I mean, I was back in the hotel, hotel room having a roll around. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he is off his rocker. I bet but he has a proper, proper party. But he's proper person. Yeah, mate. I bet he is. Yeah. He's, so, he's nice. talking, of, we was, was going to ask you for, for a lad's holiday, where would you go? I've been everywhere. I'd say, personally, for proper good people, down to our people. Do you say rain him, you can't you? Benidorm. Benidorm. Fuck it, Benidorm. First check and joy I've ever done was in Benidorm, my brother and my mother trying to party. Rune's Vegas is winning 3 1 at the minute. All these puds coming on here going Vegas. You go Vegas. He you fucking go, said Benidorm. You go, you, go, you, go, you go Vegas, right? I went Vegas my first time in Vegas. We were behind the ground in five days, right? <laughs> Didn't even get chewed off. <laughs> what? You listen, what was it? Tell you straight, bro. <laughs> Jake my brother took me out to Benidorm after my retirement. My brother was off his head. My brother was off his head. It was crazy, man. It was yeah. crazy, cunt, mate. I was crazy, cunt, mate. That's how I went down on a fucking one wheel on a fucking super bike, the man, cunt. That's how mad he was, right? He took me to Benidorm. I'm one and two off, bruv. I had a blinder out there. <laughs> 50 Safe fucking years. Behind. So, uh, at the stag do for you when you get <laughs> married, we're going Benidorm. Yeah, you know, Vegas, you get chatting the fucking 50 birds to your table. Drink your dry, they fuck off to the next cunt that's got money on the table. Go to bed on, you meet a nice fucking old man. All right, now, lad, do you want to go down in the bush? Let's go down in the bush and all that. <laughs> and that's what, that's what you're dealing with. Pop my bird. Real people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our people. Say. Fantastic. Benidorm is, I think, he sold Benidorm more than the other three have sold Vegas. Everyone right? said the same about Vegas. Yeah, you don't know what time of day it is. You get pissed all day, oh, blah, shit, blah, blah, blah. Mate, Look, seriously, if you don't remember that, if you don't know that, go Ibiza. beefer. See, I like Miami. Have you been to Miami? Probably get barred from there. He's barred from, I'm barred from most cities. Okay. I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, Miami's no, pucker. Miami, I imagine Miami's good. Oh my God, you're English? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can deal with fucking Benidorm. I think we should go Benidorm over be, Vegas. Be, 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 be fair, Benidorm's rough, but... <laughs> you know what you're getting in Benidorm, yeah. don't you? Yeah. See, you see, like, yeah. You go, the rock. see uh, uh, We can have our fight in Benidorm. Yeah. You go to Miami, you go to Miami, you go to Vegas. See, I've been for 20, 15 years ago, I mean, I've been for the first time. After Blinder, didn't have to have no money. You had, well, I had money back then as well. Still had a blinder. You had a good time, no one cared. Go to Ibiza now. What 
what you got on? Oh, where's yeah. your Rolex? Where's oh, Wayno. Your... Yeah, it, 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 seriously, you know, you're, not, you're straight. Full of fucking that, right? But years ago, it was good night, Beaver. Fucking get out the fucking Ben and Benny Ben Dorm it is then. What do you think about the YouTubers? Oh, fucking Joe Essex over here. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's a good, that's a good question. Oh, good, well done, yeah. He's nicked our fucking question. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, fast, the man that edits. So, well, yeah, go on. Rooney, ask you know him the question. I was going to say, what do you think Jealousy of Jealousy is a bad trait, and who gives a fuck, mate? They're earning money out of boxing, and they, and they crack on, mate. Yeah, like, that's true. They, they're all slagging yeah, yeah. around, well, 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 mate. They're only good money out of it. Let them fucking do it. Let them earn money out of it. It's <laughs> promoting no, boxing. No, we we all know what, what it is. We all know exactly what it is. I went to the first one in Manchester. Um, spent one and promoted it. You got my my whole family in there. It was a whole venue full of families and kids. YouTubers. My kids loved it. And Russia, it was packed. Now, Michael Kresler and Joe Kawasaki boxing that venue. And there's like eight, nine thousand, ten thousand people in the venue. That venue when I went there, watching two fucking two Bob YouTubers, was packed and sold for friendly families. If it sells, it sells. Let it sell. Let, don't be hating because I, I believe that that's a bad trait, you know. Fucking jealousy is a bad trait, and let them get on with it, mate. Yeah. Leeds could take. Who do you reckon's gonna do the Mayweather? Or... Hey, listen. Do you two want a pair of fucking headphones on the mic? Could you two ain't <laughs> sharp? Go on, you ask it. Then. I don't know what you're gonna say. Jake the, Paul. Uh, Jake Paul. Oh, oh, we nicked his hat. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather see Conor McGregor get in the ring and just kick the fuck out of Floyd Mayweather. Very old, but just fucking move. It's a little bit funny. When he boxed Conor McGregor, he played with him. He could knock him out in one round. Yeah. With hands, I know Conor's very tough. Hands wise, I've spent my time with Conor McGregor. I don't, I don't want you stupid. Conor is a very dangerous man. Hit chin, fucking me, Floyd, fucking AJ, Tyson, all one fucking match. So, but I'd, what I'd like to see, what I'd love to see, is fucking Conor just kick the fuck out of him. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you why go. would you want to see? Why would you want to see Floyd Mayweather box fucking the YouTube like? It's ridiculous. What um, AJ Fury. Yeah. Uh, Both good friends of mine. Um, closer of AJ, I'd say, but I'd, personally, Tyson's above it. Yeah. Yeah, of course he is. I ain't stupid. You're not. But the, the, this day and age, in the general public 20 years ago, they didn't really know too much about boxing. But now like, everyone knows about boxing. But the truth is, I, I think um, Tyson will win the first one. But I think the second one will be very interesting. Because what I do know and what I've watched with AJ, he adapts very well. Look at the Ruiz fight. Yeah, but he, he just he adapts and what he's got is like a fucking very. He's got like a very. Um, what do you call it? You're fucking. You're very like. Um, he won't take losing. So he'll come back a lot more fucking stronger. But I, I think it'll be a good fight. And I hope if AJ boxes him, he's got to do a lot, a lot of fight, fast footwork movement. Because mm. one thing is with Tyson, he's got great footwork. He moves, he moves like a fucking ballerina, really. Yeah. Great, yeah. And AJ For the size of him as well. So I think AJ's a lot more stiff. And I think if he does do take this fight on, he has to do a lot more, like, more lively footwork and that. But look, you sent me hundred grand. I, I fancy Tyson, but I know the rematch will be something a lot different. I think I think AJ will come back with a fucking total different like, outlook on it. And then still Tyson will still win the second one as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say definitely. And they signed a free fight contract. Is they three or two? Do you know what also what I'd like to see of them is that money's money. They're both multi millions. They don't need money now. And the money they're getting from this ain't gonna change their money from what there was and what it is. But I'd like to have seen them fucking hire that Hyde Park, mm. built their fucking own open air arena, and done their own thing. Yeah. Yeah, I wish, they, true, would, yeah, I wish yeah. they would have done it over it. Over Hyde Park. Like, Imagine you'd have 100,000 people you're, in the park. You've got the Italians in Vegas bidding for it, the three fans in Italy bidding for it, and you've got the fucking Arabs in, 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 in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. But if they'd have gone fuck you all, we'll do it in England. The next one will let you bid in it, and the third one will let you bid in it. So we do a free fight deal. Yeah. The first one's going to be in England in front of our own fans. Do an open air night. Can you imagine that? I, yeah, they, they yeah. Could in the it summer or something, yeah. Beautiful, wouldn't it? But basically, they could obviously chase the money. They've got promoters buying the managers, business, they've got backers. So they've got to go where the money is, haven't they? Do you reckon we could sell out Hyde Park? You and I yeah. are a part of it. And we should I do it. I'm going to sell out the cock box. There you go. <laughs> Four people. 
It will have it, mate. Fucking you four in it. It will have it. Fuck like myself. Well, you got to be free, mate. Right. Okay. That's yeah. been over an hour. Yeah. I don't want to put our fans off for too long. No. You got anything else you want to ask him? No, Kev, thank you very much oh, for coming on, mate. Yeah, thank you, mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Baz, as well, mate. Yeah, cheers, Baz. Are you in the background and Rooney, your fucking yeah. pillock, pair of pillocks? Has he got an Instagram page? Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah, Instagram. You do, you do Rufus, shit like this cunt. No, 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 I'm a bit different. I watch uh, my Instagram's just me and Nan. I've seen the gangster <laughs> grand. Uh, the I'll tell you man. what, Rooney's piped up on this one, isn't he? I oh, know, he's giving him flash because he's got a boxer in yeah. it. Yeah. Really life. No, me and Nan I'm just, me and Nan just watch Arsenal together the football, for Arsenal. The football, the football yeah, yeah, that's, that's all. She's a bit crazy, isn't she? Yeah, she's off her rocker, mate. Yeah, and Dagman, mate. No, I'm telling you. When when the boozers open, we should all go out and bring her with us. Absolutely. You don't drink because you're a pussy. You'll drive. He'll say I'll go to Ikea. You can rape that fuck. We'll just do we'll just fucking dick. Designated driver. <laughs> you can, yeah, yeah. You bring, you drive. We take, go down Dagnum. Oh, do you drink though? Get pissed. Yeah. Not as much as him. He don't really drink. I, bit. I can drink. He boozes. Do you know what I was shocked with? Though? He's like, a bit, I, he's a bit him, of a weasel. So, so when I met him, I thought, I thought, obviously from his social media, I thought he was fucking, I was crazy. Yeah. As he said, like, my best mate Paisy is like, it's like they put on like their um, persona, persona yeah. and their act. Yeah. I can tell he's got madness in him. He's holding back. <laughs> yeah, yeah he t- he's a little bit, I don't know, he, he comes out of his shell in his cab, doesn't it? That's your comfort zone. As soon as I get zone. in my cab, it's fucking game on. No, you're, you're, you're a killer on that cab. But when... He reminds me of the sort of fellow you see on holiday running down the street fucking naked. Which one? Oh, I ain't got the knob for it. I ain't got the knob for it. <laughs> Big ginger beard, having it. Button mate. mushrooms. Yeah. Who gives a shit, mate? Who cares, yeah? Who cares, as long as you finish. Go on. Who gives a fuck? What? Go on, end it. Oh, yeah, we've ended it. Mitch, thanks for coming and do the socials. Yeah, uh, catch us all on the usual Spotify, iTunes, Apple, fucking everything, YouTube, Crazy Ginger Cabby, uh, all the underscores, uh, 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 uh. Boulder Beard underscores. That was uh, Mitchell in the background, gnawing on the microphone. Uh, Kevin Mitchell, thank you very much. Cheers, that was Thank you, gents. Great.